Hill, a group of eight senators, Republicans and Democrats, proposing a new and wide-ranging plan for immigration reform. Now, one of those senators, Republican Senator Lindsey Graham, joins us. Good evening, sir. So are we going to get immigration, bipartisan immigration reform? Well, there will be no immigration reform unless it's bipartisan. But if you want to talk about the president bringing us together and being a bold leader, in 2007, when we tried to do immigration reform, he folded like a cheap suit when the labor uh, FLCIO got mad at the bill to allow temporary workers. Uh, Obama, Senator Obama, put a, a sunset on the temporary worker provision, which destroyed the bill for business. So I don't need a lecture from Barack Obama about bipartisanship. Uh, he was never very good at it in the Senate. And if you're going to get a bill, you need the president involved. So, Mr. President, when you speak tomorrow uh, to the nation about immigration reform, I hope you don't suggest that you're going to take uh, pathway to citizenship and delink it from border security because if you don't secure the border we know what happens you're going to have 12 million illegal immigrants uh, 20 years from now. He, President Obama gave a speech about um, immigration reform at American University in July of 2009 and yeah. I went up and listened to the speech. At the time he had a Democratic House and Democratic Senate. Why, why would he not take advantage of that time and do immigration reform? Is it because you truly can't move multiple bills through Congress? You guys can't eat and chew gum at the same time and do two things? Or, or uh, d wasn't his heart in it? Well, I think what he did in 2008, he promised comprehensive immigration reform in the first year of his presidency and he led off with Obamacare. And that took all the oxygen out of the room. Could he do it both? He can't do both? Well, by the time Obamacare was done, it took the whole year. The place was divided and bitter, and all the political capital he had in that first year of his uh, presidency, he picked the most divisive issue he could find. Rather than bringing us together, he passed a bill on party line votes, the Cornhusker kickback, the Louisiana purchase behind closed door negotiating, not one Republican voted for it in the Senate. If he had focused on comprehensive immigration reform in a bipartisan fashion, we'd have had it done in 2009. But could they be done at the same time? I mean, couldn't they have been? Is there, there's no sort of rule that you had to do one and wait for the well, next no, one. Well, no, but the, there's, there's a logic to spending your political capital wisely and keeping your word. He promised comprehensive immigration reform in his first year. He didn't lift a finger. And here we are, a bunch of Republicans and Democrats in the Senate leading yet again on this issue. I hope the president, when he speaks tomorrow, will understand that uh, to get this done, he's going to have to be a genuine bipartisan partner and not create political friction over this. This will not get done without the president being involved. Well, uh, how come the Senate uh, bipartisan Senate group today came out and made the, made the announcement about the Senate plan, it's, a, it's mm -hmm. an outline of a plan, knowing that the president was going to go out to Nevada tomorrow and announce his. Was that to, was that to undermine the president somehow? No, it was to, to let the president know that if you want to get a deal done, if you want to solve the problem, here's a blueprint. You've got eight but could he wait till Wednesday or made a phone call to him? I don't know why he's doing this. But I wonder why you guys did it the day before him. Well, we were talking with the White House for a long time, and we said instead of going in two different directions, let's try to come together. We got to get the House on the board, and we got to get the President on board, because you just can't pass a bill through the Senate and make it law. You don't think it's funny that you guys came out a day before and sort of took the wind out of his sails? No, it, it wasn't funny at all. I, I think, mean, funny being peculiar. No, I think what's peculiar is the president wants to go and basically chart a different path. And, and what I've heard about what he's going to say, he's going to say there's no need to link a pathway to citizenship to border security. Excuse me, Mr. President, the last time we provided a pathway to citizenship and didn't secure our border was in 1986. I'm not going to do that again. We're never going to do that again. We're never going to allow people to become have a legal status until we secure our border. All right. Um, Senator Hagel has been nominated by the President for Secretary of Defense. Um, mm -hmm. How are you going to vote on that one? Uh, it will depend on what he says at the hearing Thursday, but the one thing I'm not going to do is vote on a new Secretary of Defense until the old Secretary of Defense, Leon Panetta, who I like very much, testifies about what happened in Benghazi. I haven't forgotten about Benghazi. Hillary Clinton got away with murder, in my view. She said they had a clear-eyed view of the threats. How could you have a clear-eyed view of the threats in Benghazi when you didn't know about the ambassador's cable coming back from well, you Libya? Got, you guys had 10 hours with her. I mean, 10 well, hours all I can say like is, uh, you know, our guys tried to ask questions. She was very good on her feet deflecting these questions, but she said two things that will come back to haunt her. That they had a clear-eyed assessment of the threats in Libya, 
and that they had close contact with the Libyan it, government. I don't believe either one of them. Is uh, Secretary Panetta going to testify? Well, I'm not going to vote. I'm, I'm going to block Hagel from going forward so until you're he block does. Him. Absolutely. Why would we not want to understand what happened during the attack itself? How could our secretary? What happened for seven hours? Why were there no military assets available on September 11? Why, help ha these why hasn't he been called by the House? I have no idea why he hasn't been called by the House. But what did the president do? When did the president first get notified of the attack on our consulate? What did he do for those seven hours? What? If he did order assets to go in to help these people, when did he give the and order? And what did he say when they told him, I, there's nothing we can do? Senator, thank you, sir. Thank you.